G'day everyone, in today's video I am going to tell you the very best way to look after your yabbies and keep them alive for as long as possible. But before I do that, I've got something else I've got to do first. Hey Robbie, you've got mail! You better check your mailbox! Okay Robbie, thanks mate. What's the address? Post Office Box 3006! Yoranga LPO Wangaratta 3677 Okay, thanks buddy. I'll go and check it right now. Righty hey folks, I've got a couple of bits of mail. I've been uh, AWOL for a week, absent without leave, and a few things have rocked up in my mailbox. Righty oh, here I've got one. This is from B Mark. Ooh, a couple of nice Kato lures. There we are. That's what B Mark has sent me. They look really cool. They're like a couple of Kato soft shadow soft vibes. 120 millimeter mullet and 120 millimeter black pearl. Lipless crankbaits. They look like really awesome yellow belly lures. Now, what are the instructions from B Mark? Hi Robbie, my name is Byron Mark. I'm 16 years old and from Collie Amberley, New South Wales and otherwise known as Biz Fishing, my YouTube channel. I've been watching your videos for a while now and you gave me, gave me the motivation to make my own YouTube channel. I'm hosting a giveaway on my channel for a number one stump jumper very soon. I've got nearly 150 subscribers, that's really cool, and slowly growing my channel in size and I hope to be as big as your channel one day. Byron, you can do that. I have absolutely no withholds whatsoever. I am sure that you can do that. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I've sent you these two Kato Shadow Soft Vibes to give away. They work good for cod and yellow belly, and I hope to catch a fish. I hope you catch a few fish on them. Can I please get a shout out? Thank you. This is my YouTube channel profile picture. Biz fishing that looks really cool and of course you can get a shout out Byron Mark check out Byron's channel Biz fishing I'm gonna put a link in the description above to Biz fishing right now go and check it out and I'm gonna put these lures with some of my other lures that I've got up here on the notice board to go towards a giveaway at some stage thank you very much Byron yeah Byron keep doing what you're doing because I give you the tip one day you will have as many subscribers of me and possibly even more because if I can do it, anybody can do it. Now another one here, this is from Cam Stevenson. What is in this one? This is a tight little packet. Be a bit careful how I open this one. Ooh, we've got a tin. What's in the... Whoa! 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 Flies! Lots and lots and lots and lots of flies. I opened it upside down and one fell on the ground here. There it is. <laughs> I've got a cousin that sends me a Christmas card every year and puts little Christmas trees and stuff in it. Every time I open it, they go everywhere. And that sort of opening this fly tin just now reminded me of this. It's going to be quite hard for me to hold this up here because I've... Uh, there's a few... I'd say some of these windows have popped open in transit. There we go, I've got most of it back together. How cool is that for a little fly box? I've just got to be a little bit careful how I hold this because I don't want them to fall out. But Cam has just sent me these really cool flies. I haven't read the mail, the uh, letter yet. I'll read that right now. Wow. Robbie, please find and close my late father's fly box and flies. He was a great lover of fly fishing and had done it since he was a child in England. After talking to my mother, she agreed that he would have loved them to go to someone that would use them as we live in South East Queensland and cannot see any time in the future we will get opportunity to trout fish. I think there are a mixture of trout and salmon flies. Some could well be from the 60s and 70s. Thanks for making the videos that, gave a great, that give a great source of entertainment and please keep them coming. 
hope they will be of some use or pass them on to someone that can use them fly fishing regards Cam and Elaine Stevenson wow Cam Stevenson that is so kind of you so Cam's had these flies and they're his late fathers and he's thought well I can't hold on to them forever we'll send them off to someone that's likely going to use them and he sent them to me Cam I am stoked and I absolutely love this old box in fact when I opened it I thought that looks quite old sort of old school aluminium fly box that is so awesome that's a, what an amazing story first of all Cam I'm really sorry to hear of your loss the loss of your father that's something that I haven't gone through yet I have come very close a few years ago my father had a uh, he had a whole string of near-death experiences one after the other but he pulled through and now he's fighting fit at 68 years of age so I've not traveled your path just yet so please accept my condolences and thank you very much for these flies that is so kind of you to send them I am lost for words that is just amazing thank you rightio now let's talk about yabbies and what is the best way to store yabbies how do you store yabbies the best way to store yabbies is in these phone containers polystyrene containers look at that that's got a sign on it that says free please take a lot of medical type places give these away they, they transport blood tests urine samples god knows what in them livers hearts lungs i really don't know <laughs> fingers maybe i don't know but they transport medical supplies in these you can buy these you can find these polystyrene boxes or foam boxes at seafood stores seafood shops some butchers get them in and medical facilities i got this from a doctor surgery in banana i just happened to walk in a few weeks ago there's three of them sitting there and i said uh free please take so here they are now i've got three sizes smallest next one up biggest Ugh, and it's got water in it now these are the best way to keep yabbies alive because yabbies need something to live in they need they like to be able to climb and get air look at that you won't find a better place to keep your yabbies than a container like that see yabbies are amphibians they need water and they need air if you put yabbies in a plastic tub like a plastic container or a plastic bucket and you put a couple of inches of water they will most likely drown they will die if you don't have them in any water they will probably die as well because they need water in the cooler weather like now you could probably keep them under a damp hessian bag and they'd probably survive the best way to store yabbies is in a foam box just like that what i do i'll store them in the big foam box i'll put around about half an inch to an inch of water and that's enough and what happens then is the yabbies can climb up the foam so they'll climb up the sides and stick their head out and they'll get air they'll breathe the oxygen out of the air sometimes you'll lift the lid on these foam containers and the yabbies will be hanging from the top they'll be up near the roof some will be in the water they'll be all over the place but that's okay because that means they've got the choice whether to be in the air or in the water if you are using a, a plastic box and you can use plastic boxes you need to put something in there so that the yabbies can climb up you can put a brick you can put a, a old roofing tile a few stones a log just something so that the yabby can climb up and get the air you'll get the oxygen out of the air in the foam containers they can climb up the foam so you don't need anything in there but in plastic containers you need something the best thing that i find to put in with the yabbies is grass lots of dry grass not green grass just get some dry tussocks get a heap of it and put it in that'll help them keep away from each other and stop killing each other and it also allows them to climb up and get to the air now this time of the year in winter when it's really cold the yabbies should survive all winter in those foam containers you might open the lid and check on them for the first time in a few months and they might appear to be dead you might pick them up and they might appear to not have much life in them that's because when they're cold they go limp when they're cold they're really delicate they don't move much they're slowed right down in a video i made recently called black snake brumation i spoke about how snakes their heartbeat slows down and they just go to sleep when it gets really cold yabbies do the same in cold water but they survive we get minus five minus six i've even seen it minus seven here in wangaratta and the yabbies survive in the nearby farm dams and as soon as the weather warms up they start getting active again and they feed so if you put them in the foam container they'll sit there and lay dormant pretty much most of winter in the summer and you can keep them in the foam container as well but try and keep them in the shade because if they get too hot they will die they survive the cold better than they survive the heat despite being more of a warm water species 
Now here's a few tips. If you've got a heap of yabbies in your container, and there's no way of knowing exactly how many yabbies, but if you think you've got too many in there, what they'll do, they'll start biting each other's claws off and fighting. What you can do is put a heap of grass in the water with the yabbies to prevent them from getting to each other and just give them their own little space. That will help keep them alive longer. Another tip is to use pure water. Water from the tap looks really good to us, but it's got chlorine in it. I would rather go out, get some water out of the storm water drain out the front, on my front lawn right now, and put that storm water in here, then use water from the tap. That water's grey, it's dirty, there's litter in that drain out there. But the yabbies don't mind the litter. They can live around litter, but they can't live around pollutants. They don't like chlorine. So if you've got a rainwater tank, that's the best of the best, because you've got clear water and it doesn't have chlorine in it, rainwater tanks are great. Go to, the go to a local dam, a creek, a river, and grab a couple of buckets of water, and that's the best water you will find to store your yabbies in. But try to avoid tap water. Now, if you have to use tap water, try and let it sit for a few days at least before you put the yabbies in, just to allow the chlorine to dissipate out of the water a bit. So, fresh water without chlorine in it. Put heaps of grass in the water with the yabbies if there's too many of them to help them have their own little bit of space so that they stop, just to prevent them killing each other. In the summer, keep them in the shade. Try and use foam boxes. You can get these from medical, medical facilities such as doctor's surgeries. Not all of them will give them away, but some will. Doctor's surgeries, seafood stores, stuff like that, butchers even. Get them from there, the best way to store them. And if you have to store your yabbies in plastic, remember to put a couple of things in the water because the yabbies really need to be able to climb up and get oxygen from the air. I hope this has given you a few pointers on how to make sure your yabbies last. Thank you very much for watching.